Hello and welcome. Let's start our journey to JavaScript. And in this lecture, we will explore together several websites and how they use JavaScript. You don't need to install JavaScript on your computer. It is already installed there if you are watching my video now. So please open up Google Chrome. If you use other browser, I encourage you to install Google Chrome because Google Chrome is the most powerful browser in the world and during this course, we will heavily rely on its features. Please open up new tab in Google Chrome and in the search bar, please type MDN. That stands for Mozilla Developer Network. And click on the first link here. And let's now do following. Navigate to Settings, then More Tools, and here Developer Tools. And here you will see new window with different menu options, such as elements, console, sources, network, and so on. You can change its size or you can reposition it and stick it to the right by clicking on its settings and choose this dock to right option. Let's click on it. And here let's click first on elements sub tab. On this sub tab, you will see structure of this HTML document. For example, you see here HTML tag, you see here head tag. If you will expand head tag, you will see such tags as meta, script, link, and so on. Here is body tag and it contains, for example, ul tag, header, main, footer, and so on. Let's look more closely at script tags. Let's first look at this script tag. Let me expand it. And here you will see JavaScript code. And this piece of code is embedded directly into the HTML document. Let me minify this and let's look at this one. In this script tag, you see src attribute and it points to this URL. It means that uh, using this reference, you can download external JavaScript file. If I will copy this URL and paste it into the new tab, let's paste it and enter, you will see downloaded JavaScript file. Okay, let's go back to this tab and let's navigate to network sub tab. Here you can examine all files that were downloaded for this website. Let's click refresh button. Let's make this larger and examine this table. So, this table contains such fields as name, it is name of the file, then status, it is server response code, and for all those files, status code is 200. It means that all those files are available at the server and were served successfully. Next, you see type of the file, and you can sort by type, for example. Here you see, for example, SVG, style sheet, script, PNG, font and so on. Here you see size and you may notice that some files were served from the disk cache. This happens because I have already visited this website before and those files were cached in the memory. You can disable cache by clicking on this option and then reload web page. Let's do that. And now you see that those files were downloaded once again. Let's filter by file size. Click again and here you see that largest file is 46 kilobytes and it is JavaScript file. You can also filter by file type here. For example, if I click CSS, I will see only style sheet files here. Let's click on one of the CSS files, for example, this one. And here you are able to see response in plain text. Using those curly braces here at the bottom, you can pretty print this file. Let's click on this icon. And here you will see style sheet that was pretty formatted for good readability. And it contains styles for this website. Okay, let's close this and let's filter by JavaScript files. And here you see four JavaScript files. This one is the largest, and there are also such files as analytics, newsletter, and JavaScript 
with some weird numbers. Those numbers in JavaScript newsletter and main files were automatically generated. And each time when something changes, for example, in the main file, then this number will be renewed. It's made on purpose to make my browser download new file if some changes will be made. Otherwise, this file will be served from the cache. For example, if I will disable cache here and reload browser, you will see that now this main .js file is served from the memory cache. Ok, let's disable cache again and reload web page once again. Let's now examine one of the JavaScript files. Let's click on this main.js file. Let's again make it pretty, click on this icon. And here let's look at its contents. Here is a function. And this function has two parameters, global and factory. Here is if else statement. Here is if keyword, here is else keyword. In the else part, we call factory function. And we call it with one argument global. Here in the parentheses, you see condition for if statement. And it contains two expressions. First one and second one. And here is and operator. In the first condition, we check type of the module variable. And if its type is equal to object, then this expression will evaluate to true. Same happens here. We check type of the module.export variable. And if it is also object, then this expression will also evaluate to true. If this is true and this is true, then this condition will also be truthy. And if it is truthy, then everything between those two curly braces will be executed. And here you see ternary operator. That is a shortcut for if else statement. Here is condition. If it is truthy, then this will be executed, otherwise this. If I will scroll down, you will see, for example, variable declarations. So here variable called push is declared. And it is equal to push property of the R object. And so on. Let's scroll down and here, for example, you will see an object literal. It consists of name value pairs. For example, constructor is a name and jQuery is value for this name. Selector is also name and its value is empty string. Length is also name and its value is zero. And so on. No worries. At the end of the course, you will be able to read this script as I do without any problems and you will fully understand what happens in each JavaScript file. Let's now examine another web page. Let's examine website for the most popular front-end framework, React. Simply type React, let's make this window smaller, and let's click on the first link, this one. Let's again expand window with developer tools, and here you will see files that were downloaded for this web page. If I will click on the All sub-tab here, you will see such files as JavaScript, SVG, JSON, PNG, and so on. Let's now filter this files list by HTML documents. Simply click here on the doc filter. And here you see file called react.js.org. And its size is 17 kilobytes. And its type is document. Let's click on it. And let's look at the response sub tab here. If it is not pretty formatted, you can always click on this icon. Let's click on this icon and let's scroll to the very end of this file. Let me use the scroller and here at the end, before closing body tag, you will see several script tags. And all of them point to some JavaScript files. For example, this tag points to this JavaScript file. And again, you see that file names contain randomly generated sequences of numbers and letters, here, here, or here, for example. And this happens when something in those JavaScript files is changed. Ok, let's now find this file and let's examine it. 
Notice that it ends with 9D. Let's close this and let's now filter files by JavaScript file type. Let's click on this JS button. And here is the file we are looking for. It ends with 9D.js and its size is 67 kilobytes. Let's click on it and let's quickly look at its contents. So ensure that you are on the response tab and click here pretty print and here again you see for example function with three parameters. Here is another function that returns result of another function call. Here we call speedy method of the f object and we pass e as an argument. And you see here such weird names as t, f, e and so on. It means that this JavaScript file was optimized and minified for better performance. And that's why size of this file is relatively small. As we have seen, it is 67 kilobytes. Ok, let's now click also on headers sub tab. And here you see some general information about this file. You also see response headers and request headers. For example, here at the bottom you see user agent for my web browser. Here at the top in the general section you see URL where this file was downloaded from. Request method get, status code is 200, remote address and port you see also here. Ok, I think that it's enough for this introduction lecture and here I wanted to show you that every website ships to your browser with set of files such as JavaScript files, CSS files, images, document that is HTML document and so on. And your browser is responsible for rendering of the website and execution of JavaScript files. Please don't be afraid if you don't understand something or something is new for you. All what you need to know at this moment is that JavaScript is already built in into your browser. And each time when you browse in the web, your browser automatically downloads such files as CSS, JavaScript, PNG and so on and it automatically executes JavaScript code. And using developer tools you can examine which files are downloaded and you can also examine each file individually. Ok, I hope you enjoyed this lecture and next let's finally start with some practice exercises. And let's write your very first JavaScript application. See you next. Bye bye. Did you like this video? It is part of the JavaScript Bible course. Link to the full length course is now here. So please enroll if you want to become an expert in JavaScript. See you in the next videos. Bye.